Hello, welcome to the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Usually do this as a big group of us, but because of schedule and conflicts, we're going for a little different approach this year. My name is Jay and I'm joined by Ben. How are you, Ben? Very well, man. Yeah, um, I think there's just too many of us now to do um, to do this all in one go because well, last time it took so long that Aaron's KFC got called. He got really upset. Well, the first one was like me, you, Troy and Aaron, and then we did have like Ryan join us last year. I wouldn't say he participated much last year. He, he was there. <laughs> um, didn't even make a fucking list. <laughs> and then we had uh, we have the addition of Faye this year, so, who is also doing one so exactly just... I, think, I think six i think six people is just too many for like a single like list because there's going to be so much overlap especially on like the, the big end of the matches like end of the list matches probably because there's been like and also this is great because i get to have a whole episode where we don't talk anything about WWE. so if you want some WWE matches uh turn this off right now and go and watch something else because i ain't going to tell you about none of them yeah so i haven't I mean, seen I... them uh well uh there'll, there'll, there'll be one on the one that me and you do for me that we can talk about. But <laughs> I, mean, I don't. I don't think you've actually mentioned what this is. To be fair, Jay, this is our top. No, no, match. but it's bit, this is our, this is our, this is our best matches of twenty twenty three part one. So, so this far, is, yeah. So um, all these matches took place between January the first and June the thirtieth. Yes, um, the top ten, nice and easy. Um, we've uh, we're allowing up to five honourable mentions as well, just because. I know, boy, I've had five. I've taken five. <laughs> I I literally my my so I've been basically writing down matches as like a shortlist all year, and then I, I I've getting the ten out of that was quite easy. It was more the order of it, and then the honourable mentions, like what to keep and what to my my get top rid. five basically picked itself. It was then just a case of. Getting another ten, and then figuring out which five were the honorable mentions and which five were the were the final I, ten in the ten. I think I've got one that's not even that. You, sorry, you've got one in your top five that's not even in my honorables. <laughs> which you, you, you might be upset um, about, but I'll, I'm going to explain why I picked the honorables I picked before we start. Uh, before anyone gets angry, I've tried to limit it to like one match per feud, if that makes yeah. sense. Uh, just so there's a bit of variety, and I've also, unless it's like an exceptional circumstance, I've tried to limit it to like one match per like run of a wrestler, and that'll make sense when we come into yeah. it in a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll talk I about. I I know what you mean with that, with you saying that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I understand that reference. Um, well, okay then. Without further ado, how do you want to do this? Do you want to start your honourable mentions? I'll probably just bash through the honourable mentions first because they're matches yeah. that. I kind of wanted to definitely talk about a little bit, but I don't. Yeah. There's just matches that I, as I was making the list. So what I did was I, I put my top, I locked my top five in, and then I sort of put some in, and then as I had a think, like some matches just got knocked down a bit because I was like, oh no, I probably slightly preferred that. Now disclaimer: these aren't what I think are the technically best matches of the year. These are the matches that I enjoyed the most. I see. I think I think you nearly have done what I've done with my honorable mentions, which will I'll explain in my video. Um, but yeah, go ahead. What's what's right. your day? So five honorable mentions. First one. These are in no order, by the way. Uh, first yeah. one. I've taken the firm delusion. Oh, okay. I so com I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so this was on Rampage on the fifth of May. Um, this is on for two main reasons. One, uh, when I say a moaned and jumped off the top of the building, and two, when Stokely <laughs> Hathaway when Stokely Hathaway got murdered by my Hardy's kids, and shouted, "Tony Khan will pay for his crimes." <laughs> yeah, if 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 Stokely wasn't in this, it wouldn't have made the list. Plus, we talked about it literally about an hour ago on the Discord. Um, this is a, a really sort of big match and like the evolution of Big Bill into something of an actual like pillar of the company you now, which is really weird yeah. to say. Big Bill's awesome. Love them. Five, so Fair was great. Um, after a few years out in the wilderness, I think this was a return to form for the cinematic match. I think it sort of redeemed itself a little bit. I mean, it's one of those things, isn't it? Whenever Matt Hardy's involved in them, it's usually like a home run because he just gets it. Mm. Whereas I think a lot of the time when people were people who aren't as creative or or are as creative but are sort of like on a different sort of like kind of creativity. If that makes are you sense. Saying, are you saying the Moose EC3 MT Arena match wasn't as good? Oh, that was. I, I thought <laughs> thought I was going to have a nosebleed on that. I, I, to be honest, the one that came to mind for me, which was one I actually liked, but 
at the same time, I know it was very divisive, was the Brick Baker Big Swall one in the dentist office. Yeah, yeah, that, that upset Where, some people. Um, I thought it was probably, really probably just, good. Probably, I mean, it probably just upset people because it was two women, and like people just don't like that, do they? So I, I think, well, I don't know. I think that a lot of people I've spoken to who didn't like it have said that it was more because it was, um, it felt like just an angle on Dynamite than an actual pay per view match. Do you know what I liked about it in, in a sort of manic way? Because it was um because it was filmed in an actual dentist's office and like it, it was like a like, fucking horror film. Well obviously because when, when you film like films, you have open sets so you can move cameras around. And because this was just filmed in an actual building, it had like a very manic energy. It was almost like remember the um remember the kids' TV show House Hunters or whatever the fuck it was called, where they had to like cool. find things. It was like Neil Buchanan sounds, presented it, and they had to find oh, things in a house. Podcast, in, like, a, Neil Buchanan. In, like, a, in like a member of my actual family, Neil Buchanan. Um they had to find things in an actual house and it had that sort of same manic energy. Like it just wasn't enough space for anything, especially a wrestling match. It was it was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, we'll move on. We've spent too much time on that. Um, <laughs> next yeah, up, that. Um, next up, a match that gave me all of the emotions in about seventy-five seconds: uh, Leon Slater versus Dan Maloney from uh, TNT oh, Mrs. Massacre. Good choice. Yeah, I think that was a tremendous match. It was. It was. It was. It told several stories all at once. So it was Dan Maloney was getting like sort of increasingly. Um, like sort of prideful and a bit arrogant about his title reign. Um, yeah, Leon's... and the whole thing with Leon and Dan was that it was just like big brother, little brother. But Dan started getting like really nasty about it, like especially during the match. Like there was a, a definite um like respect angle there, and then Leon beat him clean, like in the middle of the ring, one, two, three. It was amazing, and then obviously afterwards we had we had the crowd he cash in the Alexis heel turn, all of the emotions, Leon getting crimed. Uh, and yeah, it was great. It was really, it was back in the best of when 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 local wrestling is at its best. It's when it sends you home with like your head kind of like half exploded because you're like, oh, what the fuck well, did I just say? It, like, it didn't send us home. It sent us to the fucking pub, didn't it? Yes, it did. It was it was that traumatizing. <laughs> we had to go and drink pints. We, to get we had to go and have like a drink and actually like break down what had just happened. <laughs> Yeah, um, you want to talk about emotions? Um, they don't come any bigger than the next match on my list is Jay Lethal versus Mark Briscoe, uh, AEW Dynamite, twenty yeah. fifth of January. So this was actually on um, what would have been Jay Briscoe's thirty ninth birthday. Um, yeah. This was Jay Lethal and Mark Briscoe basically just trying to have a match while crying their eyes out yeah. <laughs> for good reason. Uh, it was it was tremendous. Um, Leno Lethal's become a bit of a meme in AW. Like he just hangs around with the, with the, with the fun lads and and does like silly stuff. But he can go, and he, he this match showed it. Mark Briscoe was phenomenal. Uh, the story of like Mark trying to hit the J Driller like three different times, like to pay respect to his brother, yeah. and Jay kept blocking it, and then eventually getting it for the win was was beautiful. It was, and then everyone came out and sort of like hugged him, and it was, uh, and then and then after that they announced that he'd signed a, a proper contract for the company, which was great. And also the fact that he yeah. got to be on TV because like Jay never did during his life because of bullshit and like yeah. it took it took that for Mark to actually get a match on telly, which was yeah, big emotions. It's wild was... when you think about it, like how yeah. talented both of them were. Tony had to buy Ring of Honor to get the Briscoes on TV. It was yeah. it was insane. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, next up then, again, I, I, so I, I pick matches. I, I I think to pick matches to have like underlying lots of underlying like little storylines going on through them. I've gone for Orange Cassidy versus Wheeler Utah for the uh, international title oh. on the 22nd of February. Now, Orange Cassidy has had bangers all year, and he's probably had technically better matches than this, um, like matches against Flippy Boys that have been on the match against Swerve was excellent. This one, though, this hit a little different because it had that, like, soured friendship going running through it. Like, Orange Cassidy trained Wheeler Utah. Yeah. They were friends together. They were in best friends together. And then Utah became a, a blood-obsessed bastard and left him. And all throughout this match, it was almost like Orange was just trying to, he was trying to find his friend in Utah throughout the entire match and like just caught him. Also, while Utah was trying to prove to Orange why he was better than the last time they wrestled each other. Yeah. And then right at the end as well, like Orange gets the win and then he tries to like go and say to Utah, like, oh yeah, you did it right there, mate. And Claudio comes out and just is a prick and just like, no, you're not yeah. talking to him. Oh. Um, it was it was excellent. Like Orange has had a fantastic run. He's, he's, a, he's an outside shot for wrestle of the year. He really is. Uh, this match, just had that little bit of for me. With, with the I think we're at the point where he's no longer outside shot. Do you think he's a front runner, or do you think he's in the pack? 
he's uh i mean when when you look at consistent there's there's, 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 there's big names up there though, you know like big big names there's all oh, the huge names up there but when you look at consistently good matches put on because he's not had like any matches that i'd consider matches of the year mm. but, but if you look at he's... his average match quality it's probably in the top three of all oh yeah I've, I've, every every match he has is like at least three and a half, four stars. I mean, you've not got to tell me, mate. I'm going to be banging that drum come December. Like, I don't think, I don't know anyone else will, but I will be. Oh, no. I'm, <laughs> like, I, I've literally, like, got two people who are kind of like, not outside the box, but, well, they would have seen that actually earlier in the, earlier in the year. But when, when you look at, like, what they've actually done, I think it's safe to say that they, they're like two people who are very much like, should be in the argument for the rest of the year. Just wait until Zack Sabre Jr. and Orange draw six stars at all in, and then we'll talk again, all right? Oh, don't give me hope. <laughs> and then last one of the last one of the honorable mentions, um, a match that sort of snuck up on me and then was excellent, uh, was Athena versus Yuka Sakazaki from Supercard of Honor. Yeah, that was a banger. It sort of low key, like the build sort of like low key bubbled away, like because you had like Yuka like interrupting Athena when she was trying to batter people and like just really pissing her off, and then they just went to fucking war. Like it's so funny because like Yuka Sakazaki's this like little like Japanese smiley, you know, some out of like a um like she's a most studio. Girl? She's like she's like something out of one of the nice Studio Ghibli films, and then Athena was just like this absolute god of death, and then they both just went full murder for like twenty minutes. It was great. Yeah. Um. Uh, Athena is another person who's been having a fucking amazing year. Yeah. Um, even when she's just doing like, just sort of like so eliminated the matches. Big shout, Ath- Athena's it. doing in Ring of Honor what Orange Cast is doing in AW, basically. Yeah. Just putting together I, a run of like really excellent title matches. I dare say that Athena might be doing it better purely because a lot of the time Orange is going against people who have at least the audience have some level of familiarity with. Mm. Whereas Athena, a, the, a great deal of the time in Ring of Honor, is going against local talent. Yeah, and she's and really elevated people like Kira Hogan. Really she's elevated people like Diamante. She had a great match with Lady Frost. Like she just talent that, that maybe feel like you say I'm too familiar with, her, but she, she's really putting them on the map, which is which is great. Yeah. Uh, right, should we go on to the to the to the big boys, the top ten? Let's do it. Right, and at number ten, I've got Big Fucking Joe versus Tombi. From DOA. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Have I... you ever wanted to see all of a man's blood leave I... his body? <laughs> I nearly had this match on my list. This I was nearly... a match. This was a death match. First of all, this death match got stopped by the referee because Joe was going to kill a man. Um, <laughs> What was it big fucking it, Joe had again? Was it a baseball bat with nails in it? It was no, it was just a it was a like a piece of pallet. Like it, it, oh, was, that's it, it. Was, it was a four corners of pain death match, and in one corner was just a, like a half pallet with loads of nails sticking out of it. And at one point, yeah. that got ripped off and then put on top of Tommy, and then Joe was hitting it with like a with think a, chair, a hammer or a chair or something. Um, and so it took literally they had a twenty five minute interval, and they still didn't get all of the blood out of the ring. No, um, um, Faye, Faye got Tommy's blood on her face from being in the crowd in this match in, on the front row. Yeah, it was. It, I I remember me and you were stood next to each other, and we kind of like just said to one another, "Like, is, are we watching a man die? Are we <laughs> yeah. seeing a man get killed here?" And then Tom B like literally, they picked him up, like they were pulling him out of like a car wreck. Um, I mean, I spoke to him after the show, and he was fucking buzzing. Oh, yeah, he, he was <laughs> he, he was made up. I, I said to him like that match was really good, and he was absolutely delighted. He was so he was so nice and so happy, and he was made up. But we enjoyed, people enjoyed the match. He was such a, a a really nice nice dude to talk to. Um, but yeah, this was this was excellent. Um, and it was like sort of this was this was Joe putting a marker down for the rest of the tournament that we were going to see some absolute crime, uh, and we did. So yeah, this like as far as deathmatch wrestlers in the UK go, um. Because I don't want to upset the American deathmatch fans who aren't that f- aren't too familiar with Big Fucking Joe. Other he's, than been one in, he's been in GCW and he's been in like XPW. Yeah, yeah, but that, but but I meant I meant other than one clip. Um, mm. he's, he's really wrestled, kind he's of like John Wayne Murdoch. Like, come on. Yeah, that was a really fun match. Um, again, I just I, I just know how <laughs> territorial deathmatch wrestling fans are. So yeah. I'm being careful what I say before I get like <laughs> read the right act. Um, but. Big fucking Joe for me is like 
the best deathmatch wrestler definitely in the UK. I think it's, on the planet. It certainly feels like it this year that like British deathmatch wrestling is Joe's world and we're just living in it. Yeah. I I'd I'd love like that big fucking Joe to actually get to do some stuff in GCW because he had a really fun match with John Wayne Murdoch, was never gonna win it. Mm. Um he does clickbaity meme stuff for XPW, which he stuck he stuck a syringe in someone's dick. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited for Aaron's matches of the year. <laughs> um, Between that and, and um some of the absolute filth that Ryan's gonna come out with. Um yeah. Oh god, Ryan's gonna fucking have like three pheromones matches, isn't he? <laughs> anyway, that oh, will leave no. the deathmatch wrestling behind. That's all the deathmatch wrestling we've got. A little spoiler for oh, you. It's all it's oh. all Matt it's all Matt classics from here on out. Um so next up, this is kind of um this is kind of apt. Next I've got Robbie X versus Will Ospreay from one PW No Turn and Back. Rest in peace. Not <laughs> um, no I don't know. I, I, by the time you hear this, I don't know where the video library will be, but you'll be able to find it somewhere on the internet. It's probably on Fight. Um, so this match took place in Lincoln. Um, so this was this was for me. This was a big deal for me because it was the first time seeing Will Ospreay live. And no matter what you think of the guy, he is an absolute top shagger when it comes to wrestling. He is phenomenal. Um, and seeing him live, this felt like a massive event. Also, Robbie X was the, the hometown guy as well. It was set, it was in Lincoln, which is where Robbie X is from. So he got and like a hero. Only seen Robbie X wrestle once. Robbie X, I didn't, and up until this point, I didn't think he existed. So, yeah. Um. So yeah, this was. I mean, this was exceptional. It was two guys. I mean, Robbie X is possibly the best X division style wrestler who's not signed to a major company in the in the world. Yeah, I thought he was going to end up in New Japan. Um, if he goes, doing... if he if he goes to Japan, he's not coming back. Put it that way. Oh, if like. New Japan, and spe- specifically New Japan, is missing a guy who's kind of like, kind of like Ricochet. To, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the, Leo Rush as the example here to Leo Rush's Will Osprey. Mm-hmm. Like when they had like Will, Will Osprey and Ricochet just tearing up the the Super Juniors, Robbie X could could fill that role quite easily. And Vader's not around to complain about it anymore, so you know, yeah. And Robbie X versus Leo Rush is a match that I just realized I need to happen now. Now yes. that those words just left my mouth. Uh, but yeah, but this, this match was great. <laughs> um, this match. They did loads of, like, they, they did. They, obviously, no one thought Robbie X was going to beat Will because obviously Will Ospreay is Will Ospreay. But they, they give him just enough to, like, make. They had, like, three big, big moments where you thought he was going to do it. And the crowd, there was, like, um, there was, like, Two, three thousand people in the engine shed in Lincoln, like it was packed out, and pe- the crowd was fucking rowdy, and it was loud, and it was yeah, everyone was along for the ride. It was great. Um, so yeah, really, really fun match, and yeah, got to see Will Ospreay perform live, which was excellent. Next time I see him, will probably be in front of a slightly larger crowd. Um, ne- next time I see, well, the first time and next time I see Will Ospreay perform in person will be Shingo criming him, so that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, right. Next X Reels. I, I mixed these two, but it's fine. I'm, I'm happy to go with the order. Uh, actually, that was actually should have been my number eight. But I'll have it as number nine. I'll have this at number eight instead. Um, okay. This this is Lance Rivera versus Warren Banks at Wrestle Island. Fear the Reaper. Now, me and you were sat next to each other in this for this match. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed this match a hell of a lot. Um. Again, it was just so many, so so many big moments, like huge kickouts, like big spots that we thought were going to end the match, but didn't. Very different crowd. This was mostly a crowd of like, kind <laughs> of twelve to thirty, uh, eight to twelve year old kids who were about to like go feral if Lance Rivera, Lance Rivera lost because he is like beloved. I don't know. What, Warren Banks was very beloved there by the kids as well. True. I mean, it was it was um, everyone was just loving everyone, and then yeah, Casey Payne it, came out as the Grim Reaper and crimed him, which was great. Was this your first Warren Banks match? Yes, yes, it was. He's 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 different in person, isn't he? Like oh, he, he's he's he hits, he hits so different in person. He's one of those wrestlers. Like I love watching him, but I love more watching him in person because he's just. He, there's just something about when you're in the same room as him. It's the charisma. It's, it's just tremendous. everything. Everything just radiates from him that you don't but quite get it when you watch, when you watch a video. Well. And like, yeah, it's just the way the way he sort of like carries himself and like the little details that you don't see when when you watch him on on a on a telly. But now that was yeah. it was excellent, really really fun match. Alan Rivera, spoiler, has <clears throat> just lost the Wrestling Island Championship, but he had a hell of a run. He was a fantastic champion. And he, he put that promotion on his back, and he, he really mm. you know really helped carry it and had some great well, great defenses. 
Correct me if I'm wrong. Was this meant to be the ma- initially the match where Warren dropped the belt to Lance? Yes. Um, so Lance won, Lance, Lance won the belt um, against I think it was against Joey Hayes because Warren hurt himself, hurt his shoulder, and had to step away from the ring for about six months. And when he came back, it was like, yeah, Lance is in danger now. Dad, Daddy's home. Um, <laughs> yeah. But there was that. There was that spot as well where Warren like nailed him with the spear and Lance yeah. barely kicked out. That was just like, oh my god, yeah, that was just like huge emotion, uh, and and they are building as well to, to Warren Banks versus Casey Payne, which is going to be fucking tasty. Oh, Kaiju versus Kaiju, that's going to go so hard. Uh, right on to number seven, we're keeping with local wrestling. This is all. It does a definite split, like in like the so like I think the first like four or five are matches that I saw live, and then the rest are like sort of matches I've seen on TV, and I don't know how it ended up like that. He just did. Uh, next, we're going to. Um, Kind of a TNT show. I don't know if it technically was. This was the Rainbow Rumble from Effie's Big Gay Brunch Liverpool. I so very nearly put this on my list. So this was I just this. This was just like Ryan Wood. <laughs> this was thirty minutes of pure joy. When a match oh, starts, when a match starts with Shea Persa leading the entire crowd in a sing along of My Sacrifice by Creed, yeah, and ends with Paro doing literal war crimes on people, uh, and then I... in between. I think I found so many new wrestlers that I loved because of this match. Was this the first time you saw Tony Wright? No, I'd seen Tony before. Oh, good. Uh, um, so, it, I mean, the, the, the talent in this match, so Tony Wright, Harley Hudson, Prince Pele, uh, I'm going to forget people. Priscilla. Priscilla, uh, Commander Sterling, Dark Sheik was in this match, don't forget. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, oh, it was so, so, so good. Um, Got a little Benjamin Harlan from Act 2. Yeah, uh, Benjamin Campbell. Harlan showed up and uh, made his TNT Offer. debut. It was excellent. And then as an unannounced, as a special little cherry on top, as an unannounced, as I was going to put the other power match in, but then I thought, no, I can get a two for one here. I can have the, the Rumble yeah. and the power match at the same time. Um, as After the last entrance, um, Paro came out and like intimidated um, Mark Adams into putting him in the match <laughs> and then just went in and did fucking murder on everyone. Until I, I spoke to Commander Sterling after this match, and they said that they've never been so scared as when Paro eliminated them because no one's ever lifted them up before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. And, and the best thing about this, this whole, I mean, the, the show itself was phenomenal. It was really, really good fun. It was excellent. Um, it was a really cool vibe. I, we, we got to speak to Paro afterwards, and he was just such a lovely person. Like, yeah, I, I went out drinking with Paro afterwards, and he was a fucking great guy. <laughs> I'm no longer scared of Paro. I mean, I should be, but you know. I think he's our friend. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I really enjoyed this. Um, and I, this show as well. It, I think it still is my like my favorite show I've attended all year so far. Just for, just just in terms of pure fun. I mean, at one point in this yeah. rumble, Harley Hudson was like lying in the corner, borrowed a fan's wrestling is gay fan, found herself with a bit, and then was like, "Do you mind if I hit someone with this?" And they were like, "No, go ahead." And so she smacked someone with it and gave them back. Yeah, uh, Lucia Lee. Lucia Lee was also in this. She was excellent. There you go. Um, Helen yeah, Charles Campbell a, as well. Yeah. Really Helen Charles Campbell, so good. Yeah, uh, just go and watch it. It's on. It's on Progress or something. Come probably. on, Progress. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, right on to number six. Um, this was a match. I think they booked almost specifically for me. Um, so we're going to AW Rampage, twenty seventh of January. We're going Jamie Hayter versus Emmy Sakura. Yeah, this was a fucking banger, baby. Yeah, remember yeah. when? Um, Remember, women's matches just went hard as fuck because this is one of them. Um, I was a little upset initially because I was looking at hey, I wanted to put a hater match in because I think she had a very underrated title run before it got cut short by injury. You know, she only defended the belt three times. Yeah. Uh, which is tra- a tragedy because she never got a chance it, to really well, spread wasn't she Wasn't she injured like it's pretty much between Revolution and. Uh, double or nothing, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, the, so like one match, the, the match. So I was looking the match. The match I looked for initially was her match with Sheeta, but that was in December of last year. Yeah, it was on your list last year. Yeah. So, um, so Hater versus Emmy because yeah. Emmy Sakura is one of them people that we're not going to understand how good we've got it with her until she's not doing it anymore. Yeah. She's 100%. just she's she's just phenomenal. She's. She's a million miles away from from the sort of goofy Freddie Mercury impersonator that came out on like one of the first AEW pay per views. Like now she's this like hit, like basically like a mob boss, but yeah, you know, but like sort of also kind of lovely, especially I, if, you, if you're Daniel Garcia. I feel like this gimmick 
is like with the whole queen thing is how charlotte should be portrayed yeah in the sense that she's just like i'm the queen of wrestling bow to me yeah but not like not like a superiority complex because she'll me immediately just beat the fuck out of you yeah she's just dead um, uh, yeah, this not- match was this match was just the two of them just hitting each other as hard as they physically could. Like Jamie Hayter's yeah. entire title reign was just people hitting each other as hard as they physically could. It was great. Um, I can't wait until she, fingers crossed, comes back at all in and takes that title off Tony. Yeah, I, I, I really hope the because they started teasing a match with her and Rico, didn't they? Who? If Jamie? I'm not mistaken, yeah, they did it. Um, did they? Yeah, yeah, it was right before she got injured. Oh fuck, it was. It was only right. on like Dynamite or something. It was yeah. on a pay per view, but I mean, I'd love to see that yeah. on like a big stage. I, like that. Would... I completely forgotten about that. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch that because <laughs> I was gonna say I can't wait for them to have a proper match. But uh, yeah, to be honest, I'd like them. I've got a feeling the theme. I might be dropping their ROH title soon. I'd like yeah. them to then have a theme or as like Jamie's first big challenger. Oh yeah, that'd be lovely. Old person to the throne, eh? because well, just just, 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 have, just have Athena as like the evil version of Chris Statlander, and then it's fine, and then we just do that forever. Yeah, I'll do. Um, it. I I, th- I haven't put any stat matches on because she hasn't had any really long ones. She came back, she's still building up. I think t- t- the match she had with um Taya was pretty good. Talk to me at the end of the year. I think there'll be one on there by by the end of the year when she when she when she, when she hits a stride. She's getting there. She's build she's she's building momentum. Um, right yeah. on to number five. Um. So a match I didn't know what to think of until it happened, and then uh, so this is from Double or Nothing. This is MJF versus Sammy Guevara versus Jack Perry versus Darby Allen. Uh, yeah. Proof that if you're that good in the ring and there's four of you, you can just take a match with no build and turn it into a five star match. Yeah, I remember when when we were like kind of talking about this in the build up. We were not not hesitant. Hesitant's not the right word to use, but we were certainly very like cautiously optimistic about that the match will be good but maybe it needed a little bit more time mm. and or like a bit just not even time just wrong. just just a bit, it didn't have that little extra ingredients it didn't have that little bit of stake didn't have that little yeah. bit of emotion didn't have that like underlying story that the best AW matches have but then it turns out if there's just four lads who can really fucking go then it, you don't really need it <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much uh, some really fun moments in this. So everyone hitting um, moves from their mentors, including um, MGF hitting the crossroads, was great. Uh, yeah, Jungle was Boy awesome. being too honourable to use the AW title to win. Look where that ended up. Um, and then MGF beating Darby with a headlock takeover, just th- to throw it back to to that match. Yeah, I um, I, I saw a video of a similar one to this actually, um, but it was like a a list on parts of unknown. And uh, Adam Blompier talking about this match, and he said, "It when you get a spot where it's like four guys who are perfectly in sync together, it's impressive. When you have a match where they're doing them repeatedly, yeah, it becomes it becomes ludicrous. Um, and that that's why this match is so good, and why it was so memorable for sure. And this is proof that when you're that good, you don't need a big build. You can do your storytelling during your match and still put on a really good match. Yeah, and they did. Like, you, yeah." Even with the whole like Sammy Guevara turning face starting in this match, just because he announced that Ty was pregnant, and then everyone like rooting for him because yeah. like, oh, well done, Sammy. <laughs> we can't boo you. You're gonna be and, a like, dad. Well, they they even had a moment, didn't they? Where MGF was like, I know you turned my up and down, but you're gonna be a that dad now. Like, really think about think about your yeah. family. Like, think about what this means to your to your unborn child. Like, you, this money could really help. And like yeah. Sammy, like got like super conflicted. Was then like, no, I I must turn face. It's the only way. Um, all right. Next up, then, um, keeping it with MGF. Um, we're going to Revolution. MGF versus Brian Danielson in what is almost certainly the greatest. I am a match of all time. Yeah, no arguments from me. I mean, it takes an awful lot. Like attention spans of people these days is measured in seconds. Like we all have a computer in our pocket that has the wealth of information of the human knowledge on it. Yeah. To not look at your phone for ten minutes while watching a TV program now is like a real accolade. For me to have not, I didn't look at my phone once for an hour and five minutes while this match was on. I was fucking Same. captivated. Same. Um. Yeah, they, as far as uh, as far as like matches like this go, like you either want it to 
not go quickly that that sounds that sounds negative but you want it to go quickly or more realistically you want it to not feel like it's the length it is mm. And then when there's you always get, a bit like, of trepidation. It's like, oh, what if this just drags for like the middle twenty minutes yeah. or something like that? Or like, what if it's just like bit of shit? What if they and just haven't got? What if they just haven't got the gas to go for an hour and, and they're trying to do like a like a forty minute match over like one over one hour and it paces like shit? But nope, these guys just went. Let's just fucking hit the Red Bull <laughs> and they just fucking go. Um, Brian Danielson is probably the greatest wrestler of all time, and this is his magnum opus. This oh, yeah. is this is what you'll look back on when he retires. And be like this was the fucking thing. Yeah. Um. That's a statement it, right there for you. Um. That is, um, yeah, he, he's he's very much like the marathon man, isn't he? In AEW, like obviously he went an hour, uh, hour draw with Hangman, half an hour draw with Kenny, and a, an hour, and then change with MJF. He's yeah. probably gonna eventually do that with him. Um, I mean, don't, don't don't sleep on MJF as well. Like he went an hour here, he went oh. half an hour Cole a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You know, he's he's no slouch. Well, that, that was the point I was about to make as well. And the fact that MJF could keep up with that really well, I, I, I love cements that that's how, how I love the that, wrestler that, is. That's, that's how they sort of built the match as well. Because like MJF's like this like sort of work shy, like shortcut taking prick. And Danielson's just like, because he had to do his typical, like MJF says, you have to do this, 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 and this to get this yeah. match. And Danielson was like, all right, okay, I'll do all that bullshit. But then I want you, I want you for an hour. It's like playtime for Danielson, basically. Yeah. Yeah. He literally like that. He, MJF was like, "I'll give you whatever match you want. Um, you've just got to, you've just got to not lose up until, up until the pay per view. If you lose a match, you lose your shot." And some and of those matches was like, were fucking great as well. Oh, like the, one, the one against Rush yeah. was was phenomenal. Um, Bandido, Bandido, yeah, the, the, those the matches there. there. Timothy Thatcher, they were all Timothy fantastic Thatcher, yeah. matches. Um, so yeah, ex- matches you wouldn't normally see as well. Um, yeah. I think I feel like come closer to the end of the year, this is going to be in our argument for feud of the year for sure. I mean, that match is going to some of these matches. I can see maybe I might I might feel different about them in, in six months' time, depending on what happens over the next few few months. But this one ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's absolutely it's in there with a fucking bullet. Um, it's entrenched. Next, next up, then, um, this might surprise you at number three. I've got Kenny versus Will Osprey from Forbidden Door. Okay. Now, I loved this match. Don't get me wrong. It was phenomenal. In the moment, it's given me some of the better, gave me some of the, the most intense feelings I've ever felt watching a wrestling match. Like the, the highs of this match were, were unparalleled. Like the big moments were heart stopping. Um, I, I think the only reason I've got it at three and not higher is just that I wasn't really following the feud. So okay. all of the little. All of the smaller details and all of like the the sort of little personal bits didn't quite hit as hard with me. Uh, yeah. as, uh, not so much as as the you, matches that I've got above this. Above these, you watched the Wrestle Kingdom one though, didn't you? Yeah, but I didn't. Fo- I don't like follow Osprey on Twitter, so I, I, like that's yeah. really they built a lot of the match on social media, didn't they? And like Osprey and Omega go back and forth. Um, um, it, yeah. was, it was it was excellent. Yeah, it was excellent. Don't get me wrong. It was the first. I, mean, I think it's the highest rated AW match by by um Alter. Alter, isn't it? Yeah. You give it six stars. Um it means did that he, did he give Danielson and MJF five? Five 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 point seven five. Five point seven five. Yeah. Yeah. So this and also this match meant that Will Ospreay now has more five star or higher rated matches than Masala. Yeah, which is insane. <laughs> yeah, which is fucking if you if I mean Wild. again. Again, so you want about Will Ospreay? Guy can fuck. Very, very different wrestlers as well, though, aren't they? Yeah, but there were there were two. There were, there <laughs> well, were two. Spo- I say were... that both like dropping people on the fucking heads. Oh, um... yeah. there, there, were t- <laughs> there were two moments in this match where, like, my heart stopped. Yeah. Um, one was the screwdriver into the um, into the hidden blade into the stormbreaker. Yeah, for for like two, and then Kenny putting his foot on the rope. And then it was sort of the the tiger driver, which was was crime, and and then the kick the one the kick out on one for the one with angel, which was, yeah. you know, two two of the best like big moments in wrestling that we've seen all all year ever. Like maybe um, a lot of people have this at number one, and and they're not wrong. Uh, if it means it just the other the two max I've got above this are just just for me have slightly more personal stake in them, and I was a bit more personally invested in them. Yeah. Um. So, 
I think that's that's probably where we need to run into number two. And yeah. I, I I I went back and forth on one and two, and like I had them in different play. I had them I had them the other way around several times. I changed them up three or four times. Uh, at number two, I've got Eddie Kingston versus Claudio Castagnoli from Super Card Runner. Oh, that's a good one. This I was love this match. This was this was the ending of to, to a twenty year story. Told across, well, at, at this it was the end of this act of a twenty year old story. This this was yeah. a story that's been told across three promotions in their in people's own private lives. Like this is a thing that actually happened. So the the the, the whole reason that Eddie hated Claudio and still hates Claudio, like, I, and I don't even know if it's real or not. That's that's the thing because it's Eddie, and I can't I can't tell. <laughs> so yeah. they they had they had a, they had they had two matches at Chikara. And Claudio won both of them. And before they could do the third match, that you'd assume Eddie would win that because he was the babyface he was going to go over. But Claudio left to go to WWE, like legitimately left the company to to go and sign with WWE. And there was a line, wasn't there, um, in the sit down interview with Caprice when Eddie just like screamed at Claudio, "You wouldn't do business twenty years ago." And at Supercard of Honor, I'm going to make you do business. Yeah, um, yeah, th- I think. You're talking about uh, Brian Danielson being the best wrestler of all time. I think give Eddie another five years where the promos are probably going to look at him as the best <laughs> talker for sure. It's just he's already, the... he's already like one of my f- like favorite promo guys. You know when people talk about like having like had to drag themselves up through like wrestling in front of eight people and like um, you know working for for no pay and driving for 12 hours to 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 get a fucking beer and a hot dog at the end of the show like eddie's lived that life like like legitimately um and yeah to watch a man who in 2010 2011 i was seeing like taking fucking brain busters off on turnbuckles halls in front of 12 people in fucking bingo halls in philadelphia for chikara and now here he is get popping 10,000 seat of stadiums when he comes out to like fight John Moxley. It's it's just it's it warms my heart. Like and and obviously he just won he just won his first title in New Japan, which was which was un, un, unbelievable. Um, but yeah, yeah, this this match was everything. It was it was the culmination of this like 20 year revenge arc for Eddie. And the, I think the be- the beautiful thing about it was he failed. He didn't win. Yeah, because you don't always uh, win. You don't always get. You... It doesn't always end happy for you. And like especially if have you're Eddie you Kingston. Seen, um... Have you seen the the continuation of that that they did on Ring of Honor this weekend? Yeah, with Mark. With Mark. Yeah, where Ed, Eddie cuts a promo, basically saying, "Mark, I need you to do this for me and your brother." Yeah. Uh, and then Mark gets asked if he'll accept it. Like, like Renee's like, "Oh yeah, Tony Khan said if you want it, it's yours." And Claudio comes in before, and he's like a fucking serial killer. <laughs> and he's like, "Mark, I had to show Eddie his limits. I'll show you yours if you take this offer." Because the match again, we haven't really talked about the match. We just talked about like the sex that's yeah. around it. The match was incredible. They beat the piss out of each other. But like key to the finish was Eddie just got wound up and frustrated, and his emotions sort of took over him. Eddie, Eddie had Claudio beaten like multiple times in this match. He had Claudio beaten, but he had to get that one extra shot in on Claudio to show him mm. why he was better, and that's where. Like Claudio won the roll up in the end, didn't he, or something? Like it was. Think so. it, was, it, really was kind of, it was kind of out of, it was kind of out of nowhere, uh, but it was it was oh, it was phenomenal. It was it was su- such a good storytelling. Like you say, it was you can't beat. It was twenty years of natural storylines coming to a head, which was you just yeah. can't you can't manufacture that. It has to come naturally, and, and it, it's phenomenal. Like you've just got to. I know it's a lot of digging for like a casual fan, um, but for someone who wants to kind of the antithesis of it all. Um, Joseph Montecillo did a video off his own bat, but then also AEW approached him to make another video. To yeah, fill so there's, in the there's, there's two there's, there's two videos. There's one from like a couple of years ago about just Eddie and Claudio and Shikara and like the few yeah. they had, and then there's one that AEW got to do as well, like for this show, which was like the hype video, but, which was like why this match was such a, a big deal. But like you've literally just got to see like Eddie and like shoot interviews and other interviews. Like he always says he hates Claudio. Mm. Whenever, whenever people bring up his feud with Claudio, first thing he says, "I hate that man." Um, so the, like how he's, the, he's, he's just ma- he's maintained that for twenty years. Yeah, to the point where you think, "Fuck me, he does." Yeah, like I said, I said, I said at the start when we talked about this match, I don't know if that's real or not. I don't know yeah. if if does Eddie like legitimately have beef with Claudio, or I, are they really good friends and they just playing I, it along? 
I reckon they're really good friends, and just Eddie's just that good. <laughs> but like, I it, I remember I remember um when like there was there was talk of Claudio joining AEW. I think it was just after uh, I it was just after like Claudio left WWE, and Eddie Kingston put like an interview out going. I hope he doesn't come to AEW. I hate that man. And Troy like put like like shared it on Discord. I'm like, well, fuck you, Eddie Kingston. It's like, <laughs> oh Troy, you'll get worked so bad here, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. Like Eddie like lives this hatred for Claudio. Yeah. Uh right. We need to get to number, What's one. number one then. What do you think number one is? Um, I'm just trying to wrap my head around what you've not said. I've missed a few big ones out, haven't I? Um, so we're yeah. going back. To, we're going back to what is currently my show of the year, which is Forbidden Door. Oh, is and it? We're going the Fatal Four Way. No, no. It's the Hung Bucks, Eddie Kingston, Ishii versus the Blackpool Combat um, Club, the Kester and Shooter. Okay. Because this match just so I very nearly put Anakin the Arena in here because that was really good fun, but then I think when you add, when you take that match and you add in. Eddie and Moxley having like a fucking that, like, breakdown. Yeah, that war with everything else going on around them. Um, so that's my that's my spot of the year, which was just Eddie and Moxley just refusing to move, like stood like statues, and doing chopping the shit out of each other. Like Eddie's pulled his like his 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 um yeah. his vest down so you can see his and, chest, and they just slapping the piss out of each other's chest and around them on like, their faces as well. Eight men are just killing each other around them, and, and as far as they're concerned, nobody else in the world exists. They're just fo- laser focused on each other. Uh, yeah. It has uh, to catch. They're just deleting each year with that um, with that forearm. Oh my god! <laughs> I fucking love that spot. Which, like, if you know, if you know anything about Ishii, that that, that just makes the Kesha. He's like a they main call man. Him, yeah, they call him the Stone Pitbull for a reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. Takeshita hit Ishii so hard he thought about climbing back up that build and sitting on the ledge. Um, <laughs> there was also that really cool spot with the um, Takeshita double German and both young books at the same time. Yep. Uh, Hangman just murdered everyone. Like Everyone got a chance to shine in this. Like Everyone mm-hmm. had the little moment. But then the core of it, like the story that ran through the whole thing was Eddie and Moxley like, not knowing how to hate each other, kind of. Yeah. Like, like they, they just didn't quite know what to do. So, like, Moxie didn't really want... Like, there was a, a point where, like, Eddie got isolated and, like, all of the BCC were, like, just wailing on him, choking him on the ropes. And Moxie just didn't know how to, like, process it and how to react. You could see him at ringside. Get, he was, like, almost, like, angry with, like, with the situation uh, and, like, refusing to take part. And then, like, later in the match, um, the Young Bucks would double super kick Moxie. Eddie just takes the hit for him, like, pushes him out of the way. Yeah, it, it was really good. It added because uh, we were kind of talking about the feud a few weeks ago, and we were like, eh, "We think it can go to all in, but do we want it to?" And I think Eddie getting brought into it added like that extra kind of wrinkle to it, where it was like, "Okay, yeah, now, now I'm really fucking invested." Because well, it, it's, it's happening. Like, it's so, this this feud is just like we'll talk a little bit about the, the actual feud because there's no match to talk about now. Uh, but like if you look at what's happened lately, so like obviously Eddie's been pulled in to like to sort like have a thing with Moxley, and like Dark Order have been pulled in to have a thing with Hangman, and it's just sort of like it's gotten bigger than these five guys, these ten guys. Yeah. It's like all of their like skeletons are coming out the closets now, and like everyone they've ever like sort of done bad to is like oh. getting sucked into this feud, and it's it's just like everyone's getting exposed as being like a bit shit, <laughs> and it's 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 so it's it's telling like five different stories at this point, like but doing it really well, and obviously Kota Ibushi's probably coming in to do some stuff with Kenny, and it's just gonna it's like it's like the it's like the fucking like Last Avengers film of like wrestling. I mean, if if that's the case, Claudio's gonna need a hero. <laughs> if Chris, oh, man, can you fucking imagine if Chris Hero turns up? We get the kings of wrestling. Imagine, imagine, imagine in one. Golden Lovers versus in, so in, in one sto- in one storyline we could get Hangman versus the Dark Order, Eddie versus Moxley, the Kings of Wrestling, the Golden Lovers, the Bucks are still in there. Uh, yeah. Wheeler's doing Wheeler's just being a prick to everyone. Uh, Eddie and Claudio still hate each and other. Like you know, that's before the inevitable introduction of CMFTR in that mix, which is probably yeah. going to happen. Your um, chance of your chance of feud of the year drastic goes up. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I I think it's safe to say this is probably going to be feud the year. Um. Yeah. No. That's that's a cracking list. That. Um. Uh, so yeah, there we go. A couple of matches, just very quick. I know we've already done honorable mentions. Uh, a couple of matches I didn't put on because they were already covered in other feuds that I really liked. Um. Moxie versus Hanger, Texas Death Match. 
really yeah. wished I could have got that in there, but I wanted I wanted the ten man instead. Um, that was a big one. Um, Kenny versus um, Moxley in the steel cage again. Already had something in the feud, and I, I didn't want. That much. And one that I really wanted to put on there, but I just couldn't fit it in was MGF to Kesta the eliminator match. That was a banger. Yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of people having really good years. Um, just have before we wrap... have, have you noticed on the Batman list, by the way, no tag matches. Yeah, I, I'm. I feel like tag team wrestling's having a bit of a shit year this year. What's what happens when you get bored and hear the bells, mate? You know. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, there's there's a saving grace coming to it for now, but yeah. Um, just before we do wrap it up, quick uh, little surprise, quick fire thing for from you then. Which I didn't tell any of you about because I'm going to get right. you the snap this decision. So, wrestler of the year so far, Orange Cassidy. Women's wrestler of the year, seeing as you've Orange Cassidy is just your wrestler of the year. Jimmy Hater. Tag team or faction of the year so far, Blackpool Combat Club. Promo or talker of the year so far, can either be a talker or a specific promo. Eddie Kingston, uh, specifically. In the sit down interview with Caprice Coleman. Nice. Um, Pay per view of the year so far. Forbidden Door. And feud of the year so far. Uh, BCC versus the Elite, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thought, thought I'd get throw a little careful at you there. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, they were all quite easy for you to answer, to be fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's been a, your top 10 matches of the year so far and um, before we go catch us on twitch twitter and discord at untitled rest pod facebook youtube and instagram at untitled wrestling podcast thank you very much for joining us and we will see you on the next one bye bye